Howdy Tinker Nerds. On this episode of Tinkernut Labs, I'm gonna show you how to make a virtual server. Not just a virtual machine, but a virtual server that hosts several virtual machines and gives you access to them. And we'll do all this using free software. There's a lot to do, so let's start tinkering. The first thing that you're gonna need is hardware. The hardware you decide on using depends on how many and what type of virtual machines you're wanting to run. For instance, if you want three virtual machines, each with a single processor, four gigs of RAM, and 30 gigs of hard drive space, you'll need at least 16 gigs of RAM, a 100 gigabyte hard drive, and a quad-core processor to be able to run all the virtual machines and the host computer at the same time. The next step is to download and install VirtualBox and the VirtualBox extensions pack from their download page. When you have both installed, it's time to create your first virtual machine. You can do this with one of two ways. You can download a pre-made virtual image, including an Android OS from osboxes.org, or you can make your own. The one I'm gonna make is a Linux box, and I'm gonna give it four gigs of RAM and a 20 gig hard drive. Then once it's created, you can go into the settings, and under disks, you can attach your installation media, and then under display, click on the remote tab and enable it. You can leave this port number as it is, or you can change it, but just remember it because we'll need it later on. Then boot up the virtual disk and begin installing the OS. Now you have your first virtual machine. You can repeat this setup for as many virtual machines as you need. The key though is to make sure that the remote desktop is set to a different port number for each virtual machine. What you can do at this point is start up a virtual machine and then try remoting into it with a different computer on the same network. Just use the computer's IP address followed by a colon and the port number that we set up for that specific virtual machine. So at this point you have your virtual server and your virtual machine set up and ready to go. But we're missing one important thing that all virtual servers have, a way to remotely manage the virtual machines. Now there is a cool utility called PHP VirtualBox that you could install, but it also requires that you install a PHP SOAP web server, and whenever you launch a virtual machine from it, it launches the whole VirtualBox interface. So instead I'm gonna show you a simpler way to control your virtual machines using the least amount of memory possible. In order to do this, we're gonna be utilizing something called the VirtualBox headless mode. You can launch any virtual machine in headless mode by opening up a run dialog and typing this in and replacing Linbox with the name of your virtual machine. So then what we can do is put this in a batch file like this so that it automatically launches and save it as vm1 underscore on dot bat. Then to kill the virtual machine you can use this command and save this batch file as vm1 underscore off dot bat. Now you could make one of each of these batch files for each of your virtual machines, but that's a little complicated. So to streamline things, you can make a menu program like this that can launch or kill your virtual machines. So you can download this template from this link and then customize it to match your setup. Lastly, to remote into it, I'm gonna be using a simple SSH server called KPYM where basically you just install and run it, and then you can SSH into this host using its Windows login credentials. On the remoting end, if you're using Windows, PuTTY is a good SSH client. And assuming all firewalls are properly allowing traffic, you should now be able to SSH into your server and run the batch file to launch and kill your virtual machine. This definitely isn't a corporate solution for virtual servers and virtual machines, but it should work pretty well for home use. What would you do with the virtual server? Let me know in the comments below. Now this is just a reminder that the Tinkernut Instructables Raspberry Pi contest begins tomorrow, so make sure you have your projects ready. All right guys, if you got any value out of this video and would like to give some value back, please consider liking, commenting, subscribing, donating, or becoming a patron. All right, that's it for this tutorial. For more, go to tinkernut.com.